It's the first car for the comp. Well done, mate. I wish Dovey had caught that. This is one incredible adventure. It is. The fishing. The fishing. Three fishing mad amigos travel the world with one thing on their minds. Carp. Have a look at that. What a creature. I'm Ali Hamidi. Yes! Yes! I'm Tom Dove. That's a huge old fish. And I'm Neil Spooner. Look at that, a thing of absolute beauty. Together, we're angling across the planet to find the biggest carp in the world. My heart is racing. As a species, they've grown to mythical sizes. I'd be deeply disappointed if one of you two catches. <laughs> but our journey changes dream to reality. Yes! We'll take you on a wild ride to some epic locations. That is spectacular. We'll take on new challenges. I'm dealing with it so well. <laughs> we'll push ourselves to the limits. Whoa! But most of all, we'll catch monster carp. I'm so, so happy with that. Mwah. Lovely creature. Koh Samui, Thailand, 2009. A trip of true brotherly love, real friendship, Dovey and Ali. We were unstoppable together, an unbreakable bond of two best friends that loved and laughed together. <laughs> Have you ever been to Koh Samui before? Uh, years ago, I think. But I just travel so much now. I'm not really, you know, it wasn't really memorable. Really, no. No, my missus is, is a bit gutted. We've you always spoken about coming to Koh Samui, yeah. and, and I said to her, I'm "Sorry, I'm getting to see it." I said, yeah. "I know I'm not with you." Yeah. I said, "But at least I'm with Dovey. Oh, I want to be best." Exactly. Let's you know? say. Same. Enjoy ourselves, shall we? Woo! Yeah. And out. Out. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait, lads. So, yeah, like, what's you, what are you most looking forward to, like fishing? -wise? Uh, just catching loads of different species. Unreciprocated love, the story of my life. Anyway, we travelled over 6,000 miles from the UK to the island of Koh Samui, the second largest island in Thailand, which was once just a fishing community, but now a tourist hotspot and also a mecca for anglers. As a trio, we'd been to Thailand before. We had a trip of a lifetime, targeting the giant Siamese carp an astonishing 13 carp were caught over the magical 100 pound mark. With my Bezzy Spooner catching the biggest at a ridiculous 153 pounds, our biggest carp as a team to date. But even after that success, we felt we still had unfinished business with Thailand. As we know, it holds many other amazing carp species like the Rohu, the Big Head, the Black Shark Carp and the incredible looking and fighting Julian's Golden Carp which was to be our number one target this time round. To make this the ultimate challenge, there were three beautifully engraved walks up for grabs, and we were having a three-tiered competition. The biggest Julian's golden carp, the rarest, and the most carp species caught. This high-stakes match would run for 10 days over two mega venues. Venue one was a new resort called Fishing Park Samui. This place is five-star fishing luxury and it's packed to the brim with fish and holds 28 different species, including eight varieties of carp. We're in paradise again, aren't we? That is not horrible. Absolute magic. Tough job. Someone's got to do it, haven't we? Right. New mission. Yep. You'll probably catch the biggest of this species, but a new yeah. one as well, Julian Price Carp. Yeah, well, I've got to figure out how to catch them first, but if I can do that in between eating ice cream and drinking beer, I'll be pleased <laughs> with myself. <laughs> and you, childhood, adulthood, love catching anything that swims, loads of different carp species to go at. Excited? Yeah. Don't care how to catch them, whether it's on the bottom, on a float, off the top, whatever, I'm going to catch the most species. Sounds amazing. Suck it up, boys. Mm. Let's walk and roll. <laughs> 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 There's three prizes up for grabs, style of walks, different engravings for different competitions. There's one that I'd like the most, though, and that is for the biggest Julians. I think they're an incredible-looking fish, and to catch one of them maybe over 40 pounds, I think they'd win it for me. I like there's a bit of a competition this week. I'm a very competitive person, and ideally, I'd like to walk away with two walks. One for the rarest fish, I'd like to catch that black shark carp, and second of all, I'd like to catch the biggest Julian. Of the three running competitions, the one I'd like to win most would be to catch the biggest Julians, but I think the one with the most kudos is the one who catches the most species because that's the angler who has really, really tinkered throughout the session and has worked out how to catch all these different species. I think that's the one 
that takes the most skill. Many things would be key in catching the carp, depths and spots being one of them, and I started by using a bare lead to fill for the different depths. There was an original lake here that was made larger into the one you see today, and I was initially aiming for the shallow, more oxygen-rich water at the top of the shelf. I'm going to have three rods out. Two are going to be on the bottom, and they are going to be on solid bags, just with little tiny hook baits, fishing on firm sand that I know the Julians like to feed on, and hopefully some of the other carp species. And on the third rod, I'm going to have a little float ledger, OK? And on that, I could have a little tinker about throughout the day and just study, see if there's fish coming in, feed a bit of bait over the top, and something visual to look at. I love watching a float. Who doesn't? Now, I've got a feeling this is going to be the one that will do a few different species. It's dead simple. It's a method feeder, mould a load of bait around it, carp comes in, they all feed the same, they suck the whole lot up in one go, and it's my little bright hook bait in amongst it all. That is going to get me a few different species. And for extra attraction, I also topped up my spots with several bait rockets filled with house pellet. All the fish here apparently love it, including the carp. Got my three rigs already, completely different, one float. One a plain lead on the bottom and one a method feeder. And I'm just pulling bait out on the same spot over and over again to see if I can get them feeding. They're swirling at it already. This is a joke. We've drawn straws for swims. I was on the left, spoons in the middle and dovey on the right. We all had our own water that equated to roughly a third each. Time for talking was now over. We were ready to rumble. Right, boys, should we get this thing walking? Yeah, man. <laughs> I've got a cowboy hat and I'm ready. Let's go for let's it. Let's do it. All right, let's do this. Come on. When we're fishing, the battle commence. It's going to be relatively easy, I think, the fishing, but the difficult part is going to be to try and get through the number of species. So that's the tactical part of it. There's so much to think about, you know. There's going to be a lot of tinkering going on. It's going to be tactical warfare at its finest. Knowing this lake was packed with fish, we suspected it wouldn't take long for the first bite. And we weren't wrong. Oh, it's come off. Well, we had a real quick bite there, but... Just as soon as it was on, it was off again. To Spooner's right, Dovey had a take as well. I'm so close to losing the rod, it's a joke. And now Ali's in as well. Come on, a cup. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It was a chow prior catfish. These are an incredibly aggressive shellfish that will snap up all sorts, even birds. Oh, double take. We got problems. Not the best place to get one of them. Yeah, we're on. Double whammy. <laughs> After some carnage, I landed them both. The first, an amazing Amazon red-tailed catfish. Just like snakes, they actually shed their skins. The other was the famous Mekong catfish, named after the river it originates from. This fish is the world's largest freshwater species. 640 pounds, the record. Massive. I was in two. Was this one of the carp species? Paku. Never caught one of them. Doesn't count a competition, but it's still nice to get something new. In fact, I still hadn't caught a Paku. This was actually a Tambuki, closely related to the Paku and the Piranha, but this one is strictly vegetarian. We all tweaked our rigs, changed our baits... Let's try a yellow one. ..and found new spots, but could we manage to catch a carp species? No, we couldn't. Red tail catfish. Another Mekong for me. Damn. Another red tail for spoons, and just for variety, Dovey had the people's favourite, an arapaima. I know it's not a carp, but come and have a look at this fish. That is unbelievable. Dovey's just caught an arapaima. Not sure how big it is, but it definitely won't be as big as my 400 pounder from two years ago. What a creature that is! Look at that. The prehistoric looking arapaima actually breathe air from above the surface. They can grow to well over 400 pounds, Boona. But this one was around 40. Meanwhile, in Ali's swim... Oh, oh crap. That's the rod. Well, that was an expensive bite. 
a missing rod. Schoolboy. But as I stood scratching my head, I was only away again. And this one oh. felt different. Oh. oh, it's me rod. I've got me rod as well. It's just here. Guide, 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 come here. What on earth is going on down there, Ali Shat? Has he got a carp? <laughs> we got it back. <laughs> ah, it's an Amazon. It was total carnage down there. And the rod that just vanished is now back with us. There's still a fish on it. <laughs> there's still a fish on it. Well, how's your luck? If there's a carp on it, no justice. Ah, oh, it's another Amazon. <laughs> oh, never mind, Al. Sorry, Mr Amazon. Two for the price of one there. Like London buses, these Amazon red tails. More like Thai tuk-tuks, you mean? That's terrible banter spoons. The comp continued till dusk. Several more crazy speeches were banked, but no carp were caught. A big rethink was on the cars for all three of us overnight. Our Thailand extravaganza was underway, where three woks were up for grabs in a three-way carp competition. Come on, a cup. But so far on Samui, no carp had been caught. Damn. But many other species had. It was a new dawn, a new day, and we each had a plan. For Spooner, it was business as usual. Need a little bit more luck today. Need a carp on the bank. It's a red-tailed catfish again. Not what we need. At this stage of the competition, I don't plan to change too much. I'm getting plenty of bites, regular activity, and I'm a firm believer with the amount of different species in here, it can only be a matter of time before carp come along. For that reason, I'm sticking with the same approach. See what happens. So I've had a little think about it last night and starting to think that maybe if you've got a lot of attraction out there, you're going to catch catfish. So I'm going to go the opposite. I'm just going to put single hook baits out in the slightly deeper water and see if I can catch myself a carp. The deepest part in front of me was only 10 foot. I actually think it's going to be really tough for us to get through all of these other species to catch a carp of any type. And already the cogs are whirring. They're not going around, they're whirring at high speed. I got hold of some bread and maize to mould around the method feeder. The predators we've been catching won't bother with this, but it's a carp favourite. I also changed to an extremely slow sinking yellow hook bait. A lot of the carp species here feed by churning up the bottom and filter feeding on the suspended debris, so my hook bait will float up and hopefully get sucked up with everything else. Being filter feeders, the silt that holds the natural food will probably be laying in the deeper, original part of the lake in the middle. Previously, we'd been fishing on the shelf, and clearly, that's where the preds like to wait in ambush. So I repositioned into the deeper water at 14 foot. In the searing Thai heat, the fishing slowed right up for all of us. Even Spooner hadn't caught one for just over 10 minutes. The anticipation for that first carp of the competition was tense. Real tense. It's a tiring old life watching these rods. Can't beat a drop of air con in your five-star room whilst watching Monster Carp live. The afternoon started to tick by and normal service resumed in my numbers game approach as I continued to catch everything but a carp. My single hook bait approach was keeping the catfish at bay and everything else too, it seemed. But in my swim, the deeper rod was away. It was fast. But was it a carp? He's got all of his rods on maize, I believe, so this could be really interesting. If only that was all I was doing. It's a carp species. It's a carp species. I'm pretty certain. <laughs> guide, guide, guide. <laughs> what is that? Yes, that is a carp species. Get in that net, get in that net, get in that net. Yes! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh, my China! <laughs> he might have a one nil, he might have a carp. And that, I think, is a rohu. Yes! You got one. This is the rarest carp ever. <laughs> Give me the walk now. I'll, I'll send it over. No idea what species, but it's a carp. Fuming. Wow, first carp of the competition. We are off and kicking now. And it's a rare one, a rare rohu. Well, let's check out our prize. Here it is, a fish indigenous to Asia, the rohu carp. 
and it's the first one I've ever caught, possibly the last, and what a powerhouse. It literally smashed the rod almost off the rest, and what speed and aggression. I would have thought that was a 100 pounder by the take, but in fact, it's the first carp of the comp. Well done, mate. I wish Dubby to call that. Even though it's been extremely quiet on the carp front, Ali catching that one carp means he's winning two of the three competitions. He's basically walking away with it, isn't he? <laughs> Don't you forget it. With no further carp being caught, this is what the leaderboard looks like at this early stage of the competition. Another day in paradise, and I continued using the same tactics and bait in the deeper 14-foot water that nailed it for me yesterday. For me, yesterday's single hook bait approach failed, so my new plan was to use small dissolvable PVA bags with maize and pellet, fished in the deepest areas of my swim, which was 10 foot. And I was just ploughing on with my catch as much as I can approach with my high attract hook baits and heavy baiting tactics. The rods were out and it was only a matter of time before one of us would be away. And it was me, although it was delicate, unlike what we'd seen so far. I was keeping a very close eye on Al from up in No Carp Bay. That is a big head carp. It's a big head carp. Yes! Yes! Now, whilst I'm enjoying a lovely iced coffee, I'd much rather be in Al's position. The famous or infamous big head carp. Big head, big mouth, big character and it's got me into a big lead. And that big old mouth is all about filter feeding. So the setup is critical to be able to tame one of these and pick them out in amongst all of these other fish that are swimming around. I'm absolutely buzzing with these two first carp catchers. They are the rare ones and uh, they make me very confident now moving on. Yes. Gutted. <laughs> Looks like a big old chub. <laughs> it's got a big old head. <laughs> Al's in a really good position now. He's obviously got a little tactic that's working and uh, he's caught two really rare species as well. That puts me in a bad position, really. I need to get myself going. From where I was, I could also reach the area which had the 14-foot depths just between myself and Ali. But before I did, a few rig tweaks were in order. Right, made a couple of small changes, been watching exactly what Al's doing, and his method mix is definitely a lot whiter than mine. So there's a lot of breadcrumb, and I've added a little bit of sweet corn too. I've also changed the rig. These fish often come in, smash the bottom, and everything goes up in the air, and then they eat it. Well, this is a really slow sinking hook bait, so as they flick it up in the air, it stays up that bit longer and slowly comes down. But hopefully, before it gets down, they turn around, eat it, and I get my first carp. Let's have a go. Now, where have I seen that set up before? Meanwhile, I'd managed to catch a strange looking fish, an alligator gar. I really don't like them. These have been around for over 100 million years, since the dinosaur age. This living fossil can actually breathe both water and air. My similar method to Al and depth change had worked. Now, was it a carp species? That probably isn't, but this feels a little bit different. It took that first initial burst of line and now it's done nothing. Really, really a different fight altogether. There we go. Get that in the net. Get that in the net. That's got to be a carp. That is a carp, I'm pretty sure. Might be a really small Siamese. Might be something random. Yes! 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 Nightmare. It was officially confirmed as a rohu. It's always nice to catch a new species. A rohu carp, and I'm on the scoreboard. Get in. Of course I want to win, but it's lovely to see Spooner on the score sheet. Hopefully, Dovey will follow and make it interesting. The home of Thai boxing. Let's have our own little fight. Now, I'd seen a couple of Siamese carp roll in my swim, so I decided to have another tinker. Some bread moulded around my different sinking hook baits. Siamese love bread. It wasn't out long before my little tweaks were put to the test. Oh, cool. Don't lose your rod again, Hamidi. <laughs> well, that worked. <laughs> they do use a lot of bread out here because it's cheap. And all throughout the, the commercial lakes of Thailand, it's a go-to approach. So just by wrapping that boilie or that hook bait, well, on this rod, it was just a little piece of foam that I wrapped in bread and uh, 
we got ourselves a bite. Me and Dovey were in proper trouble if this was yet another rare carp species. Go on, be number, species number three. It's a Siamese, probably one of the smallest ones I've ever caught, but it's carp number three. <laughs> Get in there. That's a Siamese. We'll have plenty of them later in the week. I've had them to 153 pound. Here we go. She's probably about 25 to 30 pounds of Siamese carp. Yes, we are rolling. While Ali was having a result, I was having an absolute mare, getting hounded by Gar. Look at it. Gar on bread, gar on pellet, gar on corn. How do you get rid of them? You tell me. It's going to be another one, that be a gar. It's like I just can't get away from them. They're so annoying. Ah, oh, it's come off. <laughs> it's gone. I'm, gonna, I'm literally going to crank up in his heat. It was probably a gar anyway. And the standings at the end of day three look like this. And I was nowhere to be seen. I needed a drink. So, Dubby, any carp advice for us, mate? <laughs> what, what are we doing wrong? Well, I'm doing wrong in my swim. I just cannot catch one. There is literally been nothing down there, I don't think. Everything I see shows a gar. Everything I catch is a gar. Everything I lose is a gar. Oh, this feels so weird. <laughs> you, the one that's having an absolute nightmare. No, how many carp must there be in your swim to get them? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't turn this on its head. Come on. No, a little bit of credit where credit's due. Doing well, mate. Doing well. <laughs> it's still very early doors, lads, isn't it? We've got a whole day to go here and a whole nother lake to come. So there's probably 500 million people on the planet that like to be in our shoes right now. Let's toast to it. Cheers. Cheers. To fishing. To fishing. It's alligator. <laughs> <laughs> it was the final day in Samui before we moved to the mainland, and we all wanted to make waves on the leaderboard with free walks up for grabs. I made a big decision to move swims. Could my gamble pay off? I left a very busy, successful swim, but I wanted to explore some other parts of the lake, just in case there's some of these other rarer carp species that just prefer somewhere else on this venue. So this is why I'm here. Let's see how it pans out. I was sticking to the formula that caught me the Rohu yesterday. Long hook link, slow sinking hook bait with bread and corn on the method. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Time was ticking and I still hadn't caught a carp. A little rig tweak to include a bread coloured slow sinking hook bait with real bread around the lead. The deepest part of my swim was 10 foot, which clearly wasn't deep enough. But in front of Spooner was a different story. He had 14 foot, and that's where I was about to go. Oi, cheeky. And it was Spooner who was away first. Come on. Get in that net. Yes, that's in the net. What are you? After a close inspection, it was identified as a big head carp. Result. That's another species on the board. Just a Siamese to go from here and uh, we're joint top. Get in. Well done, Spooner. He's had a big head now too, so it's got very, very interesting. And it was about to get even more interesting. I was away again, but so too was my guide. Where was he? Oh, there he is. Oh, Siamese, Siamese. It's not a big one, but it's a Siamese, and it will make it all square between me and Al. Yes! Yes! Little Siamese. Get in. Right, look at that. My third species from here, the Siamese carp. But more importantly, the equaliser with Hamidi. Mwah. So, currently, it feels like if you are tuned into this competition, that it's tightly between Spooner and I. But I have a sneaky feeling throughout this session and adventure, Mr Dove will surge through at some point with a flurry of carp species. And it was the rod in the deeper water. Nice gar on the end. It was coming in easy and felt like my alligator nemesis again. But hang on. Oh, what is that? 
What is that? What is that? What is that? Oh, it's a little car. Please, please go in and there. Do not come off. It looks like a little carp to me. Okay, get it, get it in the net, get it in the net, get it in the net. Yes! <laughs> yes! That's got to be a carp. Oh, at long last, there's a deeper water after all. Wow, I think we are all witnessing a time miracle. Dovey has caught a carp species. Oh, that feels good. It only took a million changes to get one, but we got there in the end, and it's one of the rare ones. Mwah. And that Rohu was the final counting carp in Samui. So the leaderboard at the halfway mark looked like this. Ali and Spoons were tying on the most carp caught, all three of us were tied on the rarest carp, the Rohu, and the Julian's walk was still wide open with none caught so far. The next part of our adventure was going to be on the mainland, and to get there, we had to travel by boat across the Gulf of Thailand. Look how gorgeous this is, mate. It's probably the best moment of a trip so far, that. Look at that. It is ridiculous, mate. But it's what, it is what's at the other end that's exciting. I mean, the next venue, we're in the middle of a competition. Uh, and I'll be honest, whilst I want to walk away with all three walks, because yeah. we're all very, very competitive, so um, if I don't win any, I hope you get them all. Cheers, mate. That's very nice. Same to you as well, actually. Oh, Come on, bring it, in. bring it in. This is nice, isn't it? Isn't it romantic? <laughs> are, you, are you getting a little bit uncomfortable? No. No, no me either. Where's Al? No. Well, I don't care. I'm right where I belong. When we land the shore, it'll be another 200 kilometres to Krabby before we reach the mighty Gillam's Fishing Resort. This water has a quite mind-blowing stock of crazy fish that would make the knees of any angler on Earth tremble. But, of course, we're here for some of its many carp species. We'd been lucky enough to catch some of these monstrous carp on our previous Thai adventure with Spooner Land in the cream of the crop at a massive 153 pounds, the biggest carp we've caught to date. I could not wait to get the rods out. Among the huge variety of other carp which I'm sure we'll meet on our journey, the jewel in the crown we all dearly wanted to catch was the magnificently striped specimen, the Julian's golden carp. A stunning species famed for its red eyes and streamlined body perfectly equipped for ripping our arms off. A delicate, suspicious feeder that needs real guile to trip them up. Sweet dreams really were made of these. We had drawn swims that evening so we could hit the ground running early doors the next day. Ali drew A1, Spoons got into the same swim he caught the monster Siamese from last time, and I was in a new swim, S6. I'm behind in the competition. I've got my third choice of swim. I'm a little bit behind here, but I'm going to fish my socks off because I don't want to be walking away walkless. This place treated me so well last time, and to be back in exactly the same swim again, I think it's a sign from above. Good things are going to happen again. For me, I am desperate to catch a big Julian's, and the swim I've drawn has massive history of producing them. So, yeah, I'm really, really happy. <laughs> Excited was a massive understatement. This venue could truly grant us all our wildest fishing dreams. And not only was my swim famed for holding the Julians, but I was after redemption. Last time I caught a Siamese of mind-blowing proportions, which managed to free itself from the net. This swim is known for massive Siamese, and I was gunning for one of them too. I needed revenge. Starting approach. Just a very, very chewed down 10 mil isotonic flavoured uh, wafter, if you like, and a solid bag. All the whole lot in there, a bit of breadcrumb, a little bit of pellet, a little bit of crumb boily. Monge two rodders. I'm fishing three rods in here, three different spots at three different depths, very simple, normal carp tactics in hope of catching some Julians. I was also going in with three solid bags. Two with a higher tracked essential cell ground bait and the other stuff full of house pellet with a variety of hook baits. Gentlemen. This is 
like a little kiddie stopover that has just started. The walkie-talkies, we're going to have a little party. I think it's time to get this show on the road. What are you saying? I've been sat here for about 15 minutes, ready to go. Now I just want to get a rod in the water. Dovey, how are you looking? Ready to rock, lads. Let's do this. All set. We all topped up our various spots with some free bait to hopefully help attract some carp species to our areas. There are a lot of big fish in this lake, so you can afford to set your stall out with some heavy baiting. Then we had to sit back and wait for the action to start. It was Mr. Dove that saw the first bit of action, but was it a carp species? <laughs> oh, that's exciting. That was a very, very fast run. Well, first patch of excitement to Mr. Dove, who looks like he is hell-bent into something sizable. I feel like whatever this is, it's big, because keep feeling it flick off of the fins, and when it flicks off, it's like... It's like the, the fish has come off when it's a slack line, and it's... Beer Julians, come on. Please. <laughs> you forget how hard fighting these fish are in here. They're heavy as well. Your arm just aches instantly. I really need this to be another species as well, because I'm behind in this competition, and it would mean a lot to get one this early. Settle my nerves a little bit. Still yet to see it. Yes! That's a Julian's, isn't it? Yeah, boy! <laughs> Come on! Look how beautiful that is, man. Look at that. Yes! Yes! Look at that fish. I'm so happy with that. It's just the most amazing looking fish. It means that I'm a step closer to them in the competition. It's the first Julians I've ever caught and the first of this competition. Uh, I'm just so happy with that. What a special looking fish. We needed to get this one on the scales as it was now the Julians target to beat. That is 33 pounds, 12 ounces. Lovely job. That's quite a good size one as well. So, right, let's get him off here. <sighs> Look at that, what a unique looking fish. Then big stripes down the side of it, that beady red eye. And you can see why conventional carp tactics work so well for them, because they've got that perfect carp mouth. Exactly like a king carp, but an absolute brute. Look how wide that is across the shoulders. I'm so, so happy with that. Mwah. Lovely creature. Julian's